Hi, everyone. Welcome to another OFA um, educational event. I'm delighted to introduce multi award winning Dr. Ruth Brady. Uh, I'm so proud and privileged to have her on the OFA faculty and to have know her as a friend, uh, not only just a professional colleague. Ruth is a storehouse of information and knowledge. And what I love about Ruth is the enthusiasm she brings to any course, her enthusiasm to learn and to educate herself is infectious. And it is something that all of us have to learn. You know, we, we need to be excited about learning new things. And Ruth is always excited to learn new things and is, is you know, never shy to say that she's learned something new and to compliment somebody when she learns something new. So it's a great, great thing to have. Ruth is a dental surgeon who now only practices facial aesthetics up in York. And without further ado, I'm going to get Ruth to speak on her pet topic, which is the lips and the perioral area, particularly, you know, the aging lip. And I must say that I have learned so much from Ruth uh, in how to uh, tackle aging lips. So Ruth, over to you. Thank you, Sabrina. That's very kind of you. And uh, I'll pop the presentation up now, shall I? And um, yes, I just want to um, really impress on people that the lower face is a very, very complex area. Um, uh, it, it really upsets me when I see uh, that this area can be treated by beauticians in clinics, uh, just doing the lips on their own. And I hope by this presentation that I'll be able to impress on everybody what a complex area of consideration it is. Plant clinic uh, near York. I now restrict my practice to facial aesthetics rather than dentistry. Um, I do have 30 odd years worth of dentistry behind me, which I think has been very valuable um, to, to know the subjects as I do. Uh, I am a, an instructor, as Sabrina said, on her course. And I believe that facial aesthetics is now an accepted discipline within aesthetic dentistry because there are some aesthetic dentistry awards in the subject of facial aesthetics. And I want to say that the relevance of it within a dental practice is as far as I'm concerned, the teeth are the picture. The lips and the perioral tissues are actually part of the frame. What is one without the other? As this will demonstrate. They belong together and beautiful teeth deserve a beautiful frame. I regard the frame as being in two parts. We've got the inner frame, that's the lips and perioral, and then the outer frame, which I now call the rest of the face. Due to the advances in techniques and the, the sophisticated materials that we've got now, I now, because of the changes that I can make and that people who do what I do, um, the, 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 we actually regard this now as non-surgical plastics. It's plastic surgery without the surgery. The relevance to dentistry is obviously the improvement of the immediate frame, but also we've got to consider there are things like gummy smiles and incompetent lips. We've got um, orthodontic enhancement where jaw relationships of class two and class three they can't be enhanced by uh, orthodontics alone. So sometimes we need to actually enhance the soft tissue element to it. And then we mustn't also forget that we do actually treat um, temporomandibular joint dysfunction syndrome and oral facial pain. And this has a great relation on um, the reduction in size and force of masticatory muscles, bruxism, clenching, and actually that in itself has a great impact on the jawline and that in itself has an impact on the proportions of the lips and perioral. And the Steiner's line. 
Steiner's line is one of the lines that we use, Ricketts line is another, where we go from the nose to the chin to, from cer certain areas, and we can actually judge whether the premaxilla and the lips are in a good relation to that line. So let's talk about the inner frame. It's a very complex area to treat properly. And it's my bugbear really that people who just treat lips alone, maybe beauticians in clinics, they just don't have the sort of knowledge that they require to do this correctly. So the inner frame, I call it the lips, the perioral tissues and the chin. So we need to have an improvement of the lip volume and shape. But we need to improve the perioral skin. We need to restore tissue volume of the perioral tissues. We need to improve the nasolabial and marionette folds that hang over those and come from sometimes problems and descent of the mid face and collapse of the mid face. But we must also remember chin projection. It's important to have an aesthetic eye and an artistic flair in order to know what you're doing. But in, as well as that, we need to have an understanding of the aging process. We must know where the tissues come from in order to put them back correctly. So let's think full picture, not feature isolation. Although I'm gonna talk about the lips and perioral tissues today, I cannot forget the relevance of the chin and jawline and the descent of the mid face because it has such an effect on the lower face area. So when to tre treat lips, uh, the, the lip enhancement alone? Well, ideally, in my uh, opinion, you should only do this where everything else on the mid face and lower face is in a good proportion and balance and that there are no noticeable effects of aging. We don't want to create an unnatural look if you look at the proportion of these lips to the face, let alone anything else, to me, it's just completely out of balance and looks horrendous. Some might call this animalistic distortions. This has got to be possibly a psychiatric issue. So what we want as good clinicians is to create a natural harmony. We want to consider that young faces are out of balance, if they're out of balance, do we treat the lips alone? Or do we treat the chin, the perioral, the premaxilla, jawline, nose, mid and upper face? We've got to look at the whole picture. So let me show you Karen. Karen has a number of problems where features are out of balance. I call this sort of aesthetics precision aesthetics because it has to be precisely placed, non-surgical plastics as I call it. And in her case, I was using the Teoxane primary toolbox. So these are immediate before and after photos. You'll notice because of gentle treatment, there's no visible bruising or swelling. And I want you really to consider more the lower face. Although her cheeks have been treated, Watch the change on the lower face. That was to show the plan where I use arrows here to show what I'm going to be doing, the direction, but look at the change that we have brought about. Now, her lips, like many people's, one increment is not enough. We've got to develop them. Whoever said that you could get one, one increment, one treatment to create the most perfect lips? I don't believe you can, and I'm going to show you why later. So just from another angle, just watch the change of the lower face. The lower face, the lips, the chin, the perioral area. Just to show you the plan, and then to show you it at this half profile angle. I will show you the front aspect, the plan, and just look at the change in the lower face of, for example, the shadows, the labiomental shadow. And when you're doing a face, you should always record, something didn't happen on that last slide, but I will show it to you here. 
and the change again from this area here where we've got the perioral sloping away where the chin is lost and you've got this shadow underneath. And again, the change there. So really that on a younger person where the features are not in balance prove that you just can't treat the lips alone. If I had just done her lips, the whole thing wouldn't have looked as it does now. She would just have ended up with maybe obvious treated lips. They wouldn't have blended with the whole of the lower area. So the gummy smile. I'm going to surprise you in a moment and show Karen smiling because the gummy smile, is it vertical maxillary excess? That's too much bone and maxilla showing. Is it a short white upper lip? Is it a narrow vermilion border so that they have thin lips? Or is it actually a protruded chin that requires contraction of the mentalis muscle in order to close the lips? Well there, I bet you didn't expect that when Karen was smiling. And that's the change we've managed to bring about by bringing the chin forwards, by stabilizing the upper lip and adding volume. And from another angle, you can see that the look that we have here is slightly more animalistic for a Caucasian European. We must remember different ethnic backgrounds. Some ethnic backgrounds, such as uh, Black African, actually show more maxilla, and that is quite normal. So after a second lip enhancement, We've actually managed to get some settlement and to improve the shape of the lips here. And again here from the front. And then finally, so this was three months later once everything has settled in. Obviously we've done her cheeks and we've done some mid face work. So we've done the chin, the jawline and round here. But it just doesn't look like she's received treatment at all. So let's look at the lips. Are they a frame to the teeth and a tool of expression? Or are they a frame to the teeth and a sexual organ? They are in fact the only visible sexual organ. Let's look at the younger and the older patient. What about correction or enhancement? Let's look at younger lips. Female proportions, ideally, and obviously this doesn't go for every case because you can't always stretch lips into the different proportions as you would see here. But generally it's regarded that 1 to 1.6 on a female, maybe on a male, 1 to 1. And this is a case where it probably mirrors that just exactly as you've seen on the photograph before. And we've got the various elements of the anatomy shown on this picture here that we take into account. I'm going to show you, this is a, an incompetent lip and a gummy smile because when this um, lady actually closes her lips together, you still see some teeth. She has to contract the muscles. So here we've stabilized using toxin, but we've also placed some into the vermilion to what I call add some more material to the curtains so that when she smiles, there's more material to draw across. This was how she was when she was closed originally. And this is now how she is closed in a relaxed fashion with no extra contraction of the orbicularis oris or the mentalis muscle from the chin and from the side. A much better Caucasian European look. Just adding that extra volume, but also we've got the extra shape, the nice little Cupid's bow, the tip up here, the, the little milk line and the little shadow under the lip here. Overall, it's all balanced and blending. This was her immediately post-op, just to show you that one doesn't have to uh, create a lot of trauma. And then that was the review at two weeks. 
This is another younger lip where, in fact, really it was just the lower lip that needed to be brought forwards. Just look at them with the chin in balance. We did do a little bit to the upper lip, but we've more enhanced the lower lip to bring it more into Steiner's line. And this is actually the same patient, just from another angle. But you can see that the lower lip is touching, the upper lip is just kissing. But in fact, it was further away here. In this instance, we've not only created a bit better shape, but you can see that the, the actual hydration of the lip is better and the form of the Cupid's bow. And this young girl, only 19, her friends were all having joke lips formed at some beauticians and her mother brought it to me just for a gentle enhancement. She didn't need it, but she wanted it. So what I wanted to do was make sure that it actually fitted with her face correctly, just to give her that one to 1.6 with what I call the box of the lip be a little bit more enhanced. This was another gummy smile and an incompetent um, smile as well with a small mandible, with a small chin, and you can see the contraction of the mentalis muscle with this orange peel effect. We did restrict the smile somewhat because this patient really did need orthognathic surgery. But um, it's, she's had lip stabilization with botulinum toxin, enhancement of the lips, and we have brought the chin forwards. And overall, she's almost able to bring her lips together just naturally without contraction. And here, I'm just showing the relationship with the cheek that having enhanced her cheek, it pulls the tissues up and it gives that lovely up tip at the corner of the mouth and completes the look. That's my daughter. I'm teaching her in a one-to-one -one session as I do other people. And this is just to show that after just two sessions, she is able to treat patient, younger patients' lips with minimum of trauma, with just a tiny cannula um, entry point at each corner. But that is an immediate post-op photograph. So on younger lips, there are rarely other perioral issues to deal with, really just to increase the developmental projection. Um, the, the, the nasolabial lines are usually of a normal depth and feature. The marinette folds and perioral lines don't usually feature until the late 40s. So that's really what you've got to consider, how the lips fit on the face with the chin, with the nose. However, with older lips, it becomes more complex. We need several treatments. There are other, con other concerns such as the perioral tissue, the lips, the, the lines and folds, as well as possibly chin and cheek descent. We need to restore, reshape and enhance. We don't just need to enhance. And we do need to look at width, shape, size, projection, the ratios of the upper to the lower, and the lie of the horizontal commissures, which may well be tipped down. Once we've restored those in the first enhancement, then we can do an uplift in size if it is required. So to just give you an example of an older lip, somebody in her 40s, and how we have actually managed to give a much better kick, a much better shadow, and a much better proportion. And this lady was in her early 60s. And if you look how flat things are here, without the shadow, we've increased the shadow and we've, in, we've produced a beautiful Cupid's bow. Women hate perioral lines. They look older with thin lips. They hate jowls. Men luckily seem less affected by perioral lines. I think they've got a thicker skin and they've got uh, whiskers as well, which um, j just uh, supports that. Uh, the tissue is quite different, in fact, on a man. They can also do something to disguise them. They're very lucky. I put this one in. I thought you'd quite enjoy it, but there you can disguise the entire area. So what has caused this the demise? Well, we've got loss of volume and structure. So we have got flattening and narrowing. The ubicularis oculi muscle 
has had constant activity in speech, in sucking through straws, on smoking and cigarettes. Um, you've got the lack of collagen and elastin that happens from the age of 20. And then you've got the activity of the muscles like the depressor angular oris. You're getting a flaccid surrounding skin and also you're losing that subdermal fat layer. So in fact, the, the skin is sitting directly on the muscle and mirrors whatever the muscle does. And then you've got mid-face descent. We mustn't forget that the cheeks drop and we start to get fat spilling over and we get hypertrophy of fat as well in this area, spilling over the retaining ligaments to increase the folds. And that gives us the very aging shadows. So treatment needs to be multifactorial. We can reduce, we can restore the volume of, and the collagen. We can strengthen the border to resist that effect of the pursing action. We can restore the shape and projection to the lips. We can weaken the abicularis oculi muscle. We can weaken the depressor angular oris muscle to stop that um, very negative expression and rejuvenate the surrounding tissue. So we need to plump it, we need to hydrate it, we need to strengthen it. We need to give more bounce, more shock absorbency. We want to lift and expose the in-turned corners. The mouth appears to get narrower as we get older. And we want to look at the chin projection. I liken things to a drawstring bag. If you look at the drawstring bag, when the lips are young, they fit the face with the rest of the tissues. But as the lips get smaller, what happens to the flaccid tissue? Of course, it creases up. And this will show you what I mean. So this is an action that we do from childhood. And while we've got a lot of fat around here and a lot of collagen and strength, then on relaxing, everything goes back to normal. But as the lips get smaller, or we have a lot of habits going on, this is exactly the analogy that I use to patients. We've got the muscles of the lower face that we've already talked about. Constant contraction causes sad mouth and perioral lines. My granddaughter here demonstrates that muscle action beautifully. And you can see on this patient here, the perioral lines. And of course, it's a common expression when you're trying to say to somebody, oh, I see, people often pull this expression. What we mustn't do is forget the dentition. I think only dentists tend to regard the dentition. Are the dentures lacking support? Is there orthodontics required? Is there enough support behind the curtains, behind the lips? And what about worn teeth? due to bruxism and overclosure. Because if you've got worn teeth like this, and in fact, some patients have teeth that are far more worn than this, you're going to get gurning. Shown here by Les Dawson. Obviously, there's no way, if you've got a patient that's lost face height from the tip of the nose to the chin, you are not going to be able to restore the perioral area the way you would like it to. So one increment only, I feel that with an older person, you cannot give the perfect result. You've got to develop and produce the collagen and you've got perioral tissues that may well need attention. This is the limitation from just one increment in the lips. It's a reasonable result. She was happy with it because she didn't want her husband to know that she'd had any, any changes. But to me, that was a frustrating limitation on her result because there's no way have I developed the features that I would have liked to on this patient, but you can only go as far as they want you to go. With two increments, you'll get more collagen being produced and you'll get a better, more longer lasting shape. And you start to get perioral tissues if you've treated them becoming firmer and smoother, such as here. And on this patient here, you can see how the downturned corner has been lifted. This patient actually had a huge scar here from a growth that was taken off as a child. But we've disguised that and we've given her a better proportion and uplift altogether. Three increments. 
Now you can start getting that beautiful shape and projection and you can start to get more perfect proportions. You can firm up the perioral tissues and you can start to get resistance decreasing. And this is always a lovely case to show because we've got a better proportion, we've got a better curvature, we've got a better shadow. Shown better from this angle, you can see this beautiful V-shaped Cupid's bow with the arrowhead and the shape, the, um, the shadow underneath. Whereas here, you can see how everything is starting to contract. And from the front, you can just see that the perioral tissues are starting to be better supported as well. Don't ever think that you can get a perfect result in every case. This patient had been in a car crash. There was a lot of scarring around the whole area. But nevertheless, from one to the, to the second to the third, you can actually see how we are developing the, late, the, the, the shape of the lips. So I would say always consider doing it incrementally. Don't think you can do it in one session. And we must always consider the ethnic background, of course, of the patient and treat them accordingly. So let's rejuvenate the surrounding skin. We've got all the things that we mentioned, and there's a technique that I call the Brady buttering technique. There are multi-layered techniques that I use. Do we use needles or cannula? I prefer to use a cannula, but we're having different viscosities of materials these days with different G prime, different lifting capabilities. Do we go super periosteally? Do we go super periosteally with a needle to give some lift? Do we go subdermally then to give more bounce and more um, shock absorbency in the tissues higher up? The braid buttering technique is a way of spreading the material very smoothly under the tissue. Um, you can do it without causing the patient pain, without causing them bruises or making the, the tissues shiny red. In fact, you don't even need to massage it once it's in place. It's placed absolutely perfectly in a smooth layer, just as if you were uh, buttering a piece of bread, which is where I give it the, the name. So let's go to the nasolabial marionette folds. Just have a look now how we can alter those as well. And just doing the lips alone would not give us the full, um, the full impact. And I'm not proposing that we necessarily get rid of everything because we can't, we're not, we're perhaps taking this patient down by 10 years. But the last thing we're going to do is turn her mouth into that of a 21 year old when she's in fact 60. But look at the difference that we've made here. And of course, what I would propose to you, and I shall show you in a moment, is that this was partly done by the lift of the cheek, because the cheek has dropped and given us that nasolabial fold. Here, I'll show you the same, that by actually lifting the cheek, we've actually managed to support this area. So it's not all about placing material into this area to make it very firm. We're wanting to make it so that it is incongruous. It is totally fluent with the rest of the face. This was just one um, session alone of enhancing the chin, bringing it forwards, doing some, the first increment of nasolabial work and marionette work, but not in fact the lip augmentation at this stage. So let's not, uh, let's not forget the importance that the cheeks have here. And okay, we all know that cheeks represent the height and fullness of youth, but, and showing this picture as I do here, this is what you would expect on somebody of this sort of age with a lovely lifted cheek that has actually given lift to this whole area. And again, on a younger person, this is a flat cheek and we've actually brought uh, some uh, contour to the face. But don't let's forget that when we contour this area, it has an uplifting effect on that perioral area, such as I will show you here. So we've provided the cheek with a rounded pommette, an apple. And this has taken away the weight of this part of the face 
And of course, we've done some buttering around this perioral area and a technique by Tom Van Eyck called the Fern Technique as well. But look at the whole difference. And I've just shown this photo before. Again, you can see the apple of the cheek, but you can see the effect that it's had on this tissue alongside the buttering. And look at the cheek, at the chin. There's no way that we could get these lips to look good without actually improving the whole shape of this and giving the right shadows. Again, the whole profile is different. So I would argue here that you cannot get this curvature without increasing the projection of the upper lip but then you've got to produce the projection on the lower lip. And if you don't increase the projection on the chin, then they are going to sit proud of the chin and the whole face is going to look completely at an argument with itself. Again, just a, a chin enhancement here, as well as the lips. And this is going to actually demonstrate to you how this lower lip here is prominent of this chin until we brought the chin forwards and all of a sudden it fits. And look at the effect without having done the lips that the chin is having on the perioral area because just by stretching the chin forward without doing any buttering here, I have actually managed to get rid of all this shadowing. Obviously the lips would then follow suit afterwards. And this was the case that I showed you from the front. Just in one session, we haven't touched the lips yet, but how could I possibly have enhanced her lips and restored her lips without putting this profile right first? Now I'm all set up to do the enhancement. And you can see it from the front again. So the enhancement of the lips then comes next. I couldn't possibly have enhanced those without. Finally, I'm just going to put to you that treatment of the temporomandibular joint, the what we call temporomandibular joint dysfunction syndrome and oral facial pain. I use botulinum toxin therapy and splint therapy. I use a splint and in a case like this, we can actually slim down the face because we're actually reducing the bulk of the masseter muscle. Now, the only reason that I put this in is that on somebody such as um, Angelina Jolie, for example, she could get away with having very wide lips because she had a very wide face. But the moment you slim somebody's face down, the wider lips then look too wide. So in other words, if you've got somebody with a very wide face, you can afford to widen the lips to get the balance better. But the moment you slim the face, you've got to look at how the proportions sit within that whole facial lower face area. So we want our patients to look natural. That's the whole point of having good educational um, sessions, webinars, and um, you know, we're wanting to train people properly. We want to respect the anatomy, and this is why somebody like Sabrina, who holds um, uh, her OFA, um, uh, uh, of which I'm on the faculty um, at King's, where we learn to do dissection. She's won many awards for her work. She's also got her virtual reality app now um, for when um, it's not possible for people to come over and actually do the dissection live. It's all about following the correct facial form, as I, I'm sure you'll understand from, from what I've shown so far. I really believe that if treatment's been done well, it should not look like they've had anything done. Nobody should notice. We should look like we have just grown up that way and we are natural beauties. And that is the end of my presentation today. And I'm hoping by that, that I've just really been able to illustrate to you that it's not just a case of when a patient comes in and says, 
I'd like my lips to be bigger. Please, can you do something with my lips? It's actually far more involved than that in most cases. Thank you, Sabrina. No, thank you, Ruth. That was excellent. I'm just going to, I think, you know, dental surgeons and particularly people like you who understand the art and the science and are continuously reviewing the shortcomings of just going in and doing, you know, are so important in rejuvenating this area because this is a very complex area and it's a very visible area. And as you said, lips are a sign of sensuality. And, uh, you know, everybody wants these big, sexy lips or a lot of young girls want these big, sexy lips. And you can see how they can get distorted, completely distorted. And uh, in fact, I see the opposite in my practice where the older woman is petrified, petrified of getting their lips done. Yes. And it yes. is the one beauty feature that makes such a big difference to their face. They, 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 in their heads, they think they're going to have these huge, awful you know, baboons ass lips and they don't, they cannot believe that they can just have a soft hydration and an improvement in their lips. They're petrified of it. So they're actually choosing not to have that area rejuvenated. And again, it's like a painting that doesn't fit because there's something off in the painting because, you know, you've done the whole face, the frame and the lips are very thin and they don't fit. And I would go one further there and saying that the one thing that they absolutely hate are their perioral lines because exactly. they are so aging. But I would argue to them, but not argue, but I put the case with the drawstring bag, which I use in the surgery to say, unless you actually bring the lips back out to the width that they should be in the first place, and you give some structure to that lip border, there's no way just by giving a little bit of extra uh, tissue bounce to the white upper and lower lips, that you can, you can resist this creasing. You've really got to have some beautiful structure and you've got to have the form back in the lips in order to resist that, um, that, that ocu uh, um, orbicularis oris action. Yes. So, and, and, and actually, this, if you... This is where I think that for the older lip, you really need to start looking at treating the frame and treating the lip you know, not just treating the lip in isolation. And often, you know, they can be scared. I find energy-based devices are great for this, Ruth. Um, yes. You know, because they're just, because this area is, gets stimulated and these, you know, particularly these smokers, ritids, and, you know, these deep lines that you get. Yes. They do beautifully with energy-based devices, whether you laser it, whether you do Morpheus 8, whether you do plasma, plexa, you know, or Tixil, these are great for this perioral area. Because they're and, generating uh, collagen, aren't they? And, exactly and tightening the skin. Collagen and they really help, you know, lift this uh, and tighten it. So I think that it's a great idea to, to learn these combination technologies, particularly for, you know, the aging lip where people are scared and they don't want any visibility of product. I think one of the big problems that we see are people who have they will almost dictate to their clinician, I don't want my lips doing, mm. but I would like all this area treating. And the clinician, without realizing that the long-term implications of what they're doing through inexperience, is that they're very happy to oblige. And um, whether it's in a, a form of buttering technique, but they place um, dermal filler around the lips without actually into the lips exactly and what happens is they do they build collagen they build lift they build stiffness to that tissue and if it's done time and time again what happens is you've got the stronger tissue now becoming dominant over the weaker tissue so, which like is the gappy gappy. so they roll in and it actually makes them look worse yeah it makes them look worse so they have to have the lip and the perioral area support. It's not just one yes. or the other. It's the whole unit, Sabrina. Yes. It's, it's, they're not really separate entities. Um, th th they fit together. You can't really consider one without the other. And I think we are so, it's so common that people think of lips alone. And they just, they just don't exist on their own because then actually the lip 
is this is the lip. Yes, yes. The vermilion border that you put the lipstick on is merely the bit that you consider is the lip, but the whole area is the lip. The lip. So you're only treating one portion of it. You're treating half of it rather than the whole unit. So Ruth, I know we are running out of time, um, but I would really love for us to do another session because your knowledge on the perioral area and certainly rejuvenating the lip is phenomenal. And we have so much to learn from you. So uh, I look forward to doing another session. What would be my pleasure. This session, I'm sure when people hear, they're going to have lots of questions to ask us. So we can do a follow-up session answering all their questions. And I think that's going to be uh, phenomenal. That would be fantastic. Okay. I would really enjoy that. Thank you, Sabrina. That's I just, fantastic. I really just want to um, enlighten people. I want to re-educate people across the country, across the world, into treating this area correctly. Because perhaps then we won't see quite as much um, abuse of this area in yes. the media. Yes, because it, and we can't deny it. It is, I don't, you know, a week doesn't go by where I haven't seen a bad botch up lip done by somebody. And it the becomes the about. fashion. It becomes a distorted fashion yes. by which vulnerable young women start to assume that that is correct. They've yes. forgotten what natural anatomy exactly. is. Exactly. And the fashion's distorting the whole picture. Exactly. It becomes a fashion craze. Yes. Like those octopus lips, whatever that is. That is horrific. Exactly. Horrific. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> anyway, look, so I'm sure that this session, I'm going to just end by saying, look, please send us all your questions in the comments. Ruth is, you know, going to be very happy to address them. We'll do another uh, OFA talk where Ruth is going to address all the questions you have coming out of this um, lecture today. So Ruth, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Sabrina.